everything inside me. Information about the world around us, we get from differing sources. We get social skills and social hierarchies from our parents at home, our peers at school or work, our neighbors and our friends, in every day-to-day -day life. We know about our history from ancient writings and paintings, fossils and archaeological finds, the pioneering scientific minds of our past and present, and, of course, from word of mouth, passed down through generations. But, perhaps more crucially, in this information world, we get our news from our respective countries' media, leaders and heads of state. What if some, or all of that information is untrue? Or certain truths kept from us? Then they are withholding from us the correct knowledge, to allow us to perceive reality as it truly is, and instead distorting a reality which is being imposed upon us without our consent. Would you be happy with that particular arrangement? Well, it is clear, this is exactly what is being enacted upon us now. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Henry Mako, Lou Rockwell and the numerous other whistleblowers have taught us so much. The lengths at which those in power will seek, by, it seems, any means necessary, to keep the people in check and the current zeitgeist undisturbed, are themselves, disturbing. Ever wondered why you buy a certain product brand over another? Ever wondered why you desire a certain car, or a certain way of life? Ever wondered why a majority of us are invested in a lifestyle and way of life, that is not only destructive to ourselves and our environment, but also our future generations, without as hardly a convincing tut over the problem during breakfast? Alan Wolin MBA CEO Go Media Advertising Agency, writes. Alas, my dear readers, reality will never live up to the promise of the parallel universe created by me, and my fellow advertising executives, in our attempt to profit from the unfulfillable yearnings of our fellow man. B.F. Skinner said. The ideal of behaviorism, is to eliminate coercion. To apply controls by changing the environment in such a way, as to reinforce the kind of behavior that benefits everyone. I would like to replace one word from those quotes, by changing Skinner's everyone to some. It is to the benefit of some, that we live the lives we do, and many of us don't even realize it. Everything we see, hear, or read, has been manipulated over generations. From the invention of the printing press, to radio, television and now the internet, we have been bombarded with images and thoughts, consciously and subconsciously, that are literally altering the reality we perceive. In her 1995 book, entitled, Cults in Our Midst, Margaret Thaler Singer explores in detail the methods and processes of coercive persuasion. These methods are used, not just by cult leaders, but by anyone who manipulates the behavior of others in order to promote a hidden agenda, often involving the consolidation of power. According to Margaret Thaler Singer, the tactics of a thought reform program are organized to do three things. 1. Destabilize a person's sense of self. 2. Get the person to alter his or her worldview, and accept a new version of reality, and 3. Develop dependency in the person, turning them into a deployable agent for the controller of the agenda. Margaret Thaler Singer also lists six conditions that create an atmosphere conducive to coercive persuasion. Keep the person unaware that there is an agenda to control or change the person and their thoughts. Control time and physical environment. Create a sense of powerlessness, fear, and dependency. Suppress old behavior and attitudes. Instill new behavior and attitudes. Put forth a closed system of logic. The atmosphere of coercion is reinforced by peer modeled behavior. Basically, this means that in a room full of people who whisper, you will likely whisper too. Or if you are exposed to a slogan often enough, you will repeat it, even if you don't understand what it means. Adolf Hitler said. If you tell a big enough lie, and tell it frequently enough, it will be believed. And Vladimir Lenin said. 
a lie told often enough becomes the truth. There is no greater example of altering a nation's reality as can be seen in North Korea. We laugh and realize the ridiculousness of their beliefs in the great leader and his so-called powers, that include even registering a hole in one for his very first golf shot. We think the people must be stupid to suffer such brutal conditions, all because of that one fundamental quite obviously ridiculous belief. Yet, what if someone is laughing at us, for being so complicit and ignorant of our own control system that is in place for us? Albert Einstein said. Few people are capable of expressing with equanimity opinions which differ from the prejudices of their social environment. Most people are even incapable of forming such opinions. The United Nations Human Rights Committee states that, it does not permit any limitations whatsoever on the freedom of thought and conscience, or on the freedom to have or adopt a religion or belief of one's choice. These freedoms are protected unconditionally. Similarly, Article 19 of the UDHR guarantees that everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference. Can you really say every country that recognizes and abides by the Declaration of Human Rights has the right to claim all its citizens have unconditional freedoms of thought and conscience without interference? This is clearly impossible, as all we soak up from the environment around us influences everything we think and do. The only way to compensate for this would be to have the two or more sides to every argument unbiased and uninfluenced in any way. Can we honestly say our mainstream media allows us this privilege? Do we have the time to even allow these thoughts to take root and grow? The extremely quickening speed of life we are exposed to, the crippling pressure placed upon us all to work long hours, whilst simultaneously juggling life, work and leisure, forever chasing the dollar or dragon, whatever your vice, social pressures to fit and belong, to look a certain way or act in a certain manner, all this takes time and effort. The greatest antidote to the disease is us. Ourselves. Maybe, just maybe, one day we will all come to the enlightenment that we can have the reality we crave and deserve. A reality of unconditional peace and love worldwide. And if someone has the temerity to question it and declares that reality sucks and will, henceforth, forevermore continue to well and truly suck, just ask them the simple question. What is reality? Do not believe in anything simply because you have heard it. Do not believe in anything simply because it is spoken and rumored by many. Do not believe in anything simply because it is found written in your religious books. Do not believe in anything merely on the authority of your teachers and elders. Do not believe in traditions because they have been handed down for many generations. But after observation and analysis, when you find that anything agrees with reason and is conducive to the good and benefit of one and all, then accept it and live up to it. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.